In August 2023, Michael Zanera saw a crucifix while welding train tracks at work. He thought it was weird, so he recorded it and posted the video online. Less than 24 hours later, he passed away after being hit by a train. Ladder 3 was one of the first units to show up at the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001. Sadly, its crew perished in the collapse of the North Tower. Their truck is now displayed in the NYC Memorial. When FBI agent Robert K. Ressler interviewed Edmund Kemper in prison, the guards would lock them down in a small room with a panic button under the table that would alert the guards when he was finished or if he needed help. On one occasion, after the interview was over, Ressler hit the panic button and the guards didn't respond. Noticing his panicked demeanor, Kemper calmly told him, If I went apeshit in here, you'd be in a lot of trouble, wouldn't you? I could screw your head off and place on the top of the table to greet the guard. The guards leisurely entered the room 30 minutes later. In 1817, Mary Ashford was murdered while she was returning from a dance during Whit Monday. The crime happened in Edrington, Birmingham. She was last seen alive on 27th of May. The prime suspect's last name, Thornton, was tried but was soon acquitted by the judge. 157 years later, Barbara Forrest was murdered in Erdington during Whit Monday while returning from a dance. She was also last seen on 27th of May. The primary suspect was tried but acquitted. The primary suspect's last name was Thornton. When serial killer Ted Bundy was three, he lifted up the covers of his 15-year-old aunt's bed as she slept and slipped in three butcher knives beside her. According to her, he just stood there and grinned. I shooed him out of the room and took the implements back down to the kitchen and told my mother about it. I remember thinking at the time that I was the only one who thought it was strange, but nobody did anything. Michael Madison is an American convicted serial killer from East Cleveland, Ohio, who is known to have committed the murders of at least three women over a nine-month period in 2012 and 2013. On July 19, 2013, police responded to reports of a foul odor, investigated a garage leased to Madison, and discovered a decomposing body lying inside. Two more bodies were found the following day one in a backyard and the other in the basement of a vacant house. Tamara Strawberry Green was an exotic dancer who was hired to dance at an alleged party at the Detroit Mayor's Mansion in September 2002. When the mayor's wife walked in on the soiree, an alleged fight happened between her and Tamara. Tamara filed a police report following the incident but unexpectedly, just a few months later, she was killed in a drive-by shooting. Her case is still unsolved. Brenda Spencer, responsible for the Grover Cleveland Elementary School shooting, was only 16 when she decided to open fire at children waiting for the principal to open the gates. She killed two adults, injuring eight children and a cop using a Ruger 10 22 semi-automatic .22 caliber rifle. When asked why she did it, she simply said, I don't like Mondays. That 1820s iron collar from King's Kettle, Scotland, is a chilling relic of history. It was a macabre yet necessary measure to deter body snatchers, who were hired by anatomists to steal corpses for dissection. This collar, bolted through the coffin and around the corpse's neck, serves as a haunting reminder of the lengths people went to protect their loved ones from such gruesome fates. This is a photograph taken by Kevin Carter in Sudan in 1993. The image depicts a frail famine-stricken child with a hooded vulture eyeing him from nearby. The picture won the Pulitzer Prize for Feature Photography Award in 1994. Carter took his own life four months after winning the prize. Lois Gibson is widely considered to be the most successful forensic artist whose sketches have been used to identify over 750 criminals and have led to over 1,000 convictions. In 2009, Marie Moore, 
a mentally ill mother fatally shot her son at a firing range in Florida. Marie Moore wrote, I'm so sorry several times, on notes, as well as, I had to send my son to heaven and myself to hell. She signed the notes as, failed queen. Back in 1912, French inventor Franz Reichelt displayed unwavering faith in his homemade parachute, choosing to test it before a crowd at the Eiffel Tower. Despite numerous warnings, he leaped from the tower's first platform wearing his invention. Unfortunately, the parachute failed to deploy, leading to a tragic fall from a height of 187 feet, resulting in his untimely demise. This is the last photo taken of Frederick Fleet, the Titanic lookout who spotted the fatal iceberg. Fleet would massively struggle with survivor's guilt and bouts of depression right up until his death. He ended his own life in 1965, aged 77. This photo shows the graves of a Catholic woman and her Protestant husband in 1888 Holland tell a poignant tale. Colonel Jacobus Warneris Constantinus van Gorkum of the Dutch cavalry found his final resting place on the Protestant side of the Roman Capel Cemetery in Limburg, Netherlands. Meanwhile, his wife, Lady Josephina Carlina Petronella Hubertina van Afferden, was interred on the Catholic side. Despite the division, this devoted couple, wedded in 1842, found a way to reunite in death. Their graves feature two clasped hands, symbolizing their enduring connection, even across the religious divide. Vesna Vulovic holds the Guinness World Record for surviving the highest fall without a parachute. She fell 33,330 feet. Her remarkable survival followed a tragic incident on January 26, 1972, when a briefcase bomb detonated in the baggage compartment of JAT Flight 367, leaving her as the sole survivor. In total, 27 people were killed. This is a photo of WWE superstar Eddie Guerrero in his final wrestling match on November 11, 2005. He died two days later due to heart failure. In 2021, a bus in Bolivia crashed and 21 people died as a result. One of the survivors, Erwin Tumiri, also survived the Lamia Flight 2933 crash in 2016 that killed 71 of the 77 people on board. Most of Brazil's Chapecoense soccer team also perished on the flight. In this photo, Ayano Tokumasu, a Japanese student, can be seen in the background wearing red, standing and gazing at Niagara Falls. However, moments later, she lost her footing and tragically fell to her death. In 2016, Naji al-Baldawi sacrificed his own life by hugging a suicide bomber who was trying to detonate himself at a shrine in Iraq's Balad area, ultimately saving the lives of numerous others, a true hero. On July 18, 1989, Rebecca Schaefer, star of the popular CBS sitcom My Sister Sam, was fatally shot in the doorway of her West Hollywood apartment by an obsessed fan who had been stalking her for three years. Schaefer's death led to the passage of America's very first anti-stalking laws. A gender reveal party ended in tragedy as 32-year-old pilot Luis Angel crashes moments after deploying pink smoke. He was found lying in the rubble after the crash. He was rushed to hospital where he unfortunately died. Alicia Head claimed to be a survivor of the attacks on the World Trade Center on September 11, 2001, under the name Tanya Head. She joined the World Trade Center Survivors Network Support Group, later becoming its president. Her story was all a fabrication. In 2015, 54-year-old Larry McElroy fired his 9mm pistol at an armadillo. The bullet bounced off the animal, hit a fence, traveled through the back door of the mother-in-law's mobile home and the recliner in which she was sitting, striking her in the back. McElroy's 74-year-old mother-in-law, Carol Johnson, suffered injuries described as non-life-threatening. This is a photo of Dr. Helen Morrison displaying sections of serial killer John Wayne Gacy's brain. 
Helen Morrison was granted permission by Gacy to have his brain, and he said he wanted her to study it. She said, Studies of the brain came up entirely normal. They basically told us that there's actually nothing abnormal, so no tumor, no growth, no sign of any injury. The ventricles are fine, no sign of hydrocephalus. After learning of her husband's multiple affairs, Hella Crafts went missing in November 1986. A snowplow driver later told police he'd seen Crafts' husband using a wood chipper recently in the woods, and human remains were soon found that confirmed that her body had been frozen and then put through the chipper. Richard Crafts was found guilty of the crime and sentenced to 50 years in prison. On January 30th, 2020, Richard was released from prison and sent to live at a halfway house. 18-year-old Michael McQuilkin, who's on the right, and his 12-year-old brother Sean, who's on the left, were out on a camping trip in 1975 when they were able to catch this photo of their hair standing up in California's Sequoia National Park. Unfortunately, the two boys were struck by lightning just moments later, but miraculously, they both survived to tell the story. In May 1997, schoolboy Jamie Lavis was abducted and murdered by bus driver Darren Vickers. Vickers then moved in with the Lavis family, claiming that he wanted to help them find Jamie because he was haunted by the fact he might have been the last person to see him alive. The Lavis family was so blinded by his false determination and desire to bring their son back home alive that they allowed him to continue to live with them. Jamie's remains weren't found until two years after his disappearance. During that time, Vickers would make very public appeals on television as he urged the public to help find Jamie and took part in searches he knew were going nowhere. He was sentenced to 25 years in prison in 1997. He was denied parole in February 2023. In February 2023, 17-year-old Jack Snyder saw two boys, aged 13 and 14, walking home in freezing weather, so he offered them a ride. They repaid Jack's kindness by shooting him, leaving his body on the road and walking away. They were allegedly trying to carjack him. Admiral Jeremiah Denton Jr. conveyed the word torture through Morse code by blinking his eyes while being held captive in Vietnam. His captors recorded this moment for propaganda and broadcast it globally, but naval intelligence successfully deciphered his unique blinking message. He was the first of the American POWs released by Hanoi to step off an American plane during Operation Homecoming on February 12, 1973. This photo shows people running from a cloud of debris from the collapse of the World Trade Centers on September 11, 2001. In 2012, 65-year-old homeless Miami man Ronald Popo was nearly killed after being attacked by Rudy Eugene. He pounced on Ronald and began to bite and eat his face. Ronald was left with a severely disfigured face. In the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie of 1974, the human skeleton in the house at the end of the movie was a real human skeleton. Due to the small budget, the art director found it cheaper than buying an actual skeleton prop. The Setagaya family were killed on December 30th, 2000. The killer remained in their house for several hours afterwards, eating their food, logging into the family computer, and even sleeping on their couch. The individual responsible for the crime has never been identified. This is Abraham Lincoln sitting for a photograph on the 10th of April, 1865. Four days later, he was assassinated. This is Alan Rickman looking well in one of his last ever public photographs before losing his battle with cancer. Rickman was diagnosed with terminal pancreas cancer in August 2015, something he kept in private 